here we go. All right, guys, um, my name is Donald Parker. I'm a, a CISSP boot camp instructor, um, and I've gone rogue. Well, it, I mean, it, I'm at least trying to go rogue. Um, I've taught boot camps here in the States and abroad for several different training companies using their material. And I, I kind of grew tired of using their material because I felt like it was bloated and confusing. Uh, it didn't follow a logical flow. So I started working on my own material. It took a few years. I finally got it finished. Um, and now I only teach with my material. And I'm trying to cut out these training companies as third-party agents um, and get my own students. So that's, that's the reason why I'm doing this. Um, well, one of the reasons anyway. So uh, I'm also a consultant supporting uh, corporations and federal agencies. Um, and a lot of times I teach classes, like I teach a crypto class, I teach uh, the risk management framework uh, quite a bit. And sometimes I get contracts from folks that I taught the class to, to come in and help them implement different strategies. Um, so all the material for this Jeopardy round comes from the CyberSec study uh, course material that I developed, um, that I teach with, and um, you can find that on my website, and I'll show that. Well, actually, that's what's showing right now, um, but we'll talk a little more about it once we finish this round. So for the new folks, um, the way we play the game is, uh, first of all, everyone should mute their microphone. Uh, the first person will make their selection uh, for the category and dollar amount that they want. Uh, when you see the answer displayed in, in typical Jeopardy format, when you see the answer display, you have to be the first one to type your response in the chat section uh, here of this GoToMeeting uh, menu bar. Um, so you'll type your, um, your question in and uh, if you get it right, if you're the first born person to, to type it in, you don't have to type in the whole thing. You could type in just a few letters if it's uh, descriptive enough. And um, and then once you get it correct, you unmute your microphone, uh, make your selection, and mute your microphone again before um, uh, trying to, to type the question in for the next one. All right. Um, with that... Let's go ahead and get started. Let me change the screen that I'm sharing. And everyone should see the Jeopardy board now. All right. So. This is round number 12. Uh, again, I think we're gonna get up I think we're going to get up to about round 15, 16, somewhere around there. Uh, we're already um, finishing the material for several domains. Tonight, we're going to have domain 1.14, security and risk management. Domain 3.11, security and engineering. So we've finished domain 2 completely. We're going to have domain 4, communications and network security. Domain eight, security in the system development life cycle. So we finished domain two, uh, domain five, domain six, domain seven. So now we're going back round robin style. We'll have another uh, category for domain 1.15, security and risk management, and then domain 3.12, security and engineering. All right, last week, we had three contestants that did extremely well. Mal Malachi's not here. Um, he, he was a first time participant and really came in and, and did extremely well. But our returning champion, Becky the Terminator, um, dominated as usual. So, and then George was really close also, and then Lorraine um, after that. So, with that, uh, Becky, you have the first selection. 
Uh, why did you set me up like that? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go with uh, security and risk management 1.114 for 200. 1.14 for 200. I don't have my chat thing. <laughs> I didn't have my chat window open. Let me scroll up. All right. First correct response was from Becky. What is a control? So safeguards uh, and countermeasures are also considered controls, but they're implemented at specific times. And we'll go over those in just a moment. All right, Becky. I'm going to go with uh, 1.14 domain security and risk management. I'm going to go for 1,000. All right, big money. I have first correct response from Sorov. What is a safeguard? Yeah. All right, hold on just a second, Saurav. Uh, so a safeguard is also a protective measure put in place before a risk has been identified. So it's a control also, um, but it's a, a control you put in before your organization is compromised, before you have an exposure. All right, Saurav, the uh, board yours. Yeah, uh, I'll go uh, security in the SDLC 400. Domain 8. For yeah, domain 8. 400. 400. All right, here we go. First correct response is from Becky. What is adware? All right, Becky. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing my responses. I'm typing in, but I'm glad you saw it because I did type in. Oh, yeah? Okay. I'm going to go uh, for um, security risk management for 800. 1.114. One 1.114. One, one <laughs> 1.114 for 800, you said? All right, here we go. First correct response, again, from Becky, the Terminator. What is integrity? Uh, integrity is a word that we we see and we'll see in a lot of different domains. Um, but the private sector is more concerned with integrity and availability of their information. Uh, and that's not to say that they're not concerned about confidentiality. Uh, but private sector, the, the, the private corporations, they usually have information they want their customers to see and only a, a, a small piece of information is, um, is, is sensitive and secret. But for the purposes of the exam, FT Pote, the private sector is more concerned with confidentiality and integrity of their information. All right, Becky, just a second. That one didn't clear out. All right, Becky. Okay, domain 1.15, uh, I'll go for 1,000. <laughs> All right, going for the jugular. All 
I have a, an incorrect response. And guys, I send out the uh, study material for each round, uh, usually around Monday or Tuesday of every week uh, before that coming round. Um, and there's audio that you can listen to for that specific round coming up. All right, original Brit, you got beat out um, by the fastest typer in the game, uh, Becky the Terminator. Correct response is planning horizon. All right, so uh, a planning horizon, it's a, it's a term used to describe how you would group or categorize your IT security goals. So because you can't do everything all at once, a planning horizon allows you to identify short-term, mid-term, and long-term IT security goals, which uh, really allows you to, to prioritize your goals and allocate the appropriate amount of resources. All right, Becky. Okay, uh, I'm going to go for uh, 800. I'm going to stay where I'm good at 1.15. <laughs> 1.15 for 800. I, I got uh, <laughs> George jumped in and, and beat you on this one, Becky. He just typed. I got more letters. I got more letters. I should be <laughs> yeah, Again, you don't have to type the whole thing. He typed in obscurity. The correct response is what is security through obscurity? And I get it. I, I, I have arguments in my classes about this one a lot, this term. And I ask is uh, security through obscurity is it a good idea? You know, does it make sense sliding your key up under the front door, up under your mat? Um, the example I like to give is having a sensitive document inside an envelope labeled a sensitive. And rather than just having it sitting out, you know, outside on your desk, you could put it in your drawer. Even though the drawer is unlocked, because it's out of sight, because it's obscure, um, you have security. So it's, um, you know, it's not good security, but it's better than nothing. All right, George, what do you got? All right, let's do a 3.12 security engineering, 1,000. All right, we're going to get all the big ones out of the way early. Yeah. <laughs> the main 3.12 for 1,000. Here we go. Now we're getting into some cloud stuff. I have an incorrect response, another incorrect one. First correct response is from original Brit. <clears throat> what is community? Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, God! Yeah, Becky, let me in. <laughs> Congratulations. I did. I mean, really. I mean, I was showing up much emotion. Because <laughs> I can't type tonight. <laughs> you've, been, you've been practicing your typing over the week? Oh, well, no, I have not, actually. Uh, but anyway. Um, hold, hold, hold tight, original Brit. Let me clear this one out again. Um, so, again, we're just touching on, just touching on cloud stuff. Um, I was actually on a contract at um, GSA where the first, when the FedRAMP program was first being developed, the first vendors, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Verizon, all the big cloud providers, in order for them to provide cloud services to federal agencies, they have to go through this FedRAMP program. So me and my team helped to develop the FedRAMP program, uh, but the focus you have cloud deployment models and cloud security model or service models, excuse me. Those are the two models that you have and, and community is one of the deployment models. Uh, we'll go through all of them as we go through the material. But uh, NIST has guidance 
on, I believe it's 800 60. Um, I'll have to get that number for you. But um, uh, deployment models and service model, models, focus on those. All right, Original Brit, what do you got? Domain number eight, please, 4,000. All right, there's going to be no big money left here soon. Here we go. This one, if, uh, and I do have a correct response again from Original Brit. What is a salami attack? Um, this one was in that movie, uh, what was it, Office Space, the movie Office Space. This was the attack that they did. They wrote code that would siphon off small amounts uh, from their company's um, account into their account, and they wrote the, quote, the code wrong, and it siphoned off a lot more money than, than they intended. All right, original Brit, what do you got? Let's go to the domain I don't like, um, number four for a thousand, please. <laughs> the one you don't like for big money. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, this, this is a pretty tough domain. Correct response is from the Terminator. What is, <laughs> what is ICMP? ICMP is used by network devices like routers to send error messages indicating that a requested service is not available or that a host or router could not be reached. All right, you guys are letting Becky take all the big ones. Okay, let's go with 800 for the 1,000 didn't go away for the telecommunications. We just it still looks like it. Okay, yeah. Let me let me touch that again. That still didn't go out. Go ahead and make your selection. It'll clear out by the time we get to the next one. Okay, we're gonna go. I wanna stay in that domain for 800. All right. Here we go. First correct response is from George. What is NAT, Network Address Translation? NAT is uh, it's a service that allows an entire private network of computing devices to hide behind one routable IP address. Um, and the reason why NAT came about is because with IP version 4, IPv4, we were running out of IP addresses. Um, so they came up with a, several different schemes to help overcome this problem. They came up with IPv6, which has, uh, instead of 32-bit addresses, 128-bit addresses, so you could have uh, an exponentially larger number of IP addresses available. Uh, but that really, IPv6 uh, has been put on hold because of NAT, because NAT is working so well, um, I mean, think of if you've got a, a company with 100 computing devices and you had to have routable IP addresses for all 100 of them, you could now have just one routable IP address on your router and then give non-routable IP addresses to all the systems behind that router. And when they go to make a connection outside, they use the router's IP address. So you're, you're just saving IP addresses. So NAT serves that purpose. And then classless inter, interdomain routing, CIDR, that's another, uh, NAT and CIDR are really what's holding off the implementation of IPv6. All right, so we had domain 4 for 1,000, still hasn't cleared out. Right, that one's going to be a problem, child. We had domain 4 for 800. Uh, that also didn't clear out. 
so I'll keep those in mind if anybody makes those selections. Uh, hopefully they'll clear out here in a moment. Uh, but George, the board's yours. All right, let's do uh, domain eight for 800. Domain eight for 800, here we go. I have a, a poorly typed yet correct response from the Terminator. What is data diddling? So think of companies like Enron and Tyco when they were um, uh, overstating revenue and assets while understating expenses and liabilities on their uh, annual reports. So laws like uh, SOX came out as a result of data diddling by Enron and Tyco. And that one didn't clear out either. You know, this is the, the same board that we used last week that performed so well. I just edited that one and now we're having problems with it but i think we're on track now okay becky the board yours unless you're on mute okay i was uh which one did i pick you did i forget domain, that was diddling so that was domain eight for 800. Was, okay okay domain eight for 800. i'll go for 600 now domain eight all right, here we go. First correct response is from George. What is a script kitty? So software developers or, or hackers used to be software developers. They had to be developers in order to develop the uh, viruses and worms, uh, the malicious code. But nowadays, there's so many samples or examples of malicious code out there, a script kitty can just go out and download uh, code and have it execute or just execute it to do the things that they want to do. So script kitty implies that you're not a software developer. You're someone who just downloads code that was written by someone else. All right, George, what do you got? Go back to uh, security and the SDLC for 200. All right, domain eight for 200 to close out that category. Correct response. Uh, he just, uh, George just beat himself. <laughs> You typed it in twice before anybody else could. Correct response is dumpster diving. I'm sure everybody's heard of this one. So is it, uh, one of the questions I get a lot in the classes about this one is, is dumpster diving illegal or, or unethical? And my reply is it's certainly unethical to take or to try to take someone else's information. Uh, but whether it's illegal or not, to me, depends on whether the dumpster is behind a, a, a gated uh, building or a gated off area and you're tres trespassing or not. <laughs> All right. George. All right, let's do uh, domain 3.11 since we haven't touched that yet, I believe. So, for 200. 3.11 for 200. Correct response is from Becky. What is normalized data? Uh, so normalization is the process of removing redundant data from a database or from a table. 
uh, and it speeds up the analysis process. Okay, Becky. Uh, let's do uh, big money, 1000 for security engineering. Main 3.11, 1000. That was close, Becky. No cigar, close original Brit, but no cigar. These two terms are very close. The ones you guys are selecting and versus the one that is the correct one. All right, I got a correct response from original Brit. What is inference? So if I break out my trusty and not at all dusty, uh, the CISSP CBK, Common Body of Knowledge, is our Bible. Bible for the CISSP, the fourth edition, is the new eight domain format. So it says inference is the ability to deduce or infer sensitive or restricted information from observing available information. Um, and they gave an example here. What was that question again? That threw me off. What was that question again that you had? That was uh, three. Can you show the, three can you show the question? Yeah, hold on just a second. When users can put together pieces of information at a security level to determine a fact that should be protected at a higher level. So these two terms, inference and aggregation, let's hold on and discuss these after this round because they're really close, but there are a couple of key words that we need to know to distinguish them. All right, uh, that was 311, uh, original Brit, the board is yours. Um, I have domain 3.12800. Three point one two for eight hundred. Here we go. Correct response is from original Brit. What is a private cloud? Again, this is one of the deployment models. You have public, private community and hybrid and a lot of people when they think of the cloud they think of uh, a pro I mean a public deployment model where your information is commingled with all of that cloud providers other customers information um, but it is possible to request and, and and pay a little bit more for a private cloud where they have to provision a certain part of their environment just for you. Uh, and in most cases, I recommend, um, I, I, I helped implement or helped um, FEMA uh, move one of their systems into a cloud environment. And we requested a private cloud that wasn't just logically separated from all their other customers, but was physically separate from all of their customers. They didn't want to do it. They, of course, they want to do it the easiest way. Um, so it makes a lot of sense to have a cloud broker who can help you demand and get these things from these cloud service providers. So if it's logically uh, segregated, is that not considered a private cloud? Say again? If it is logically separated but not physically separated, it, is it still considered a private cloud? Uh, the, the, the most cloud providers would like to think so. So if you have... <laughs> Yeah, they'll sell it. They'll sell a logically separated environment as a private cloud if you allow them to. Um, so even after you enter into these agreements with these cloud providers, you then have to go and, and request to do a tour 
of their environment so that they can show you <laughs> um, that they've actually done what you requested. All right, let's uh, let's move on. We got uh, we just did domain three dot twelve for eight hundred of uh, original Brit or yours. It was, it was I. Um, may I have domain 3.11 for 800, please? 3.11 for 800. First correct response is from Becky. Has some extra letters in there, but <laughs> <laughs> close enough. Aggregation, and we're going to talk about inference and aggregation, um, and just well once we finish this round. All right, Becky. Okay, that was uh, which one was that? Was that, that was, aggregation? That was security engineering, right? That was domain three eleven security engineering for eight hundred that did not clear out. Okay. Thank you. All right, here we go. Okay, let's do let's do security engineering for six hundred. The main three dot eleven for six hundred. First correct response is from original Brit. What is save point? These database operations. Uh, this is something I, I, I recommend you, you spend some time with. So a save point is a database operation designed to allow a system to return to a certain point should an error occur. All right. Original Brit. Let's, let's close it out um, for 400, please. Name 3.11 for 400. First correct response is from Becky, what is commit? So this is another database operation. Um, the commit database operation completes a transaction. My fast fingers at work again. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Okay, now oh, the board's clear. That's, that's, okay, that's closed out. Okay. Uh, what about the security uh, engineering at 312? Are those still there? Yep, there's uh, two, four, and six. Let's go for six. All right. Made 3.12 for 600. I have a response from George that I'm going to take. I don't get another one in two, three, two, one. Oh, well. And uh, original Brit came in at the last minute with the exact response. I'm going to have to, sorry, George. Got to give it to original Brit. The correct response is cloud consumer. So yeah, you, you'll see them referred to as client, um, cloud client uh, versus cloud provider or versus cloud consumer. Uh, but cloud consumer is is how they're listed in the NIST guidance. All right, that was original Brit. 312 for 600, didn't clear out, give me just a second. All right, we're going to have to wait on that one. All right, original Brit. 
Let's stay with the same um, category for um, 400, please. All right, here we go. All right, George jumped on this one. Correct response is, what is a public cloud? Again, these are deployment models. You have your deployment models and your service models. All right, George. All right, let's do that domain one, dot 14 for 400. 1.14 for 400. First correct response is from George. What is availability? And again, the private sector, private corporations are more concerned with integrity and availability. Um, of course, they're, they're concerned with confidentiality, but for the purposes of the exam, FT Pot, private sector is more concerned with integrity and availability. All right, that didn't clear out again. All right, George. All right, let's go ahead and do a same category, 600. To close it out, here we go. Correct response is from Becky. What is confidentiality? The public sector is more concerned with confidentiality. The three objectives, the, pre, the three primary objectives of security as a whole, everything you do in, in, with, with respect to cybersecurity, information security, um, whatever you want to call it, is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And uh, Private sector is more concerned with integrity and, and availability. The, the public sector, uh, federal agencies are more concerned with confidentiality. They're also concerned with integrity and availability, but more concerned, primarily concerned with confidentiality. All right, that was 1.14. Close that category out. All right, Becky. Uh, let's go with, uh, so, oh, so uh, 115 is gone? 115 is still available. Oh, okay, 600 for 115. 115 for 600. First correct response, first two correct responses are from George. What is defense in depth? So uh, the way I usually explain this is if you implement um, many different layers of controls, uh, controls that deal with confidentiality, that protect confidentiality, controls that protect integrity and or availability, uh, but multiple layers of security is defense in depth. All right, George. All right, let's do uh, domain four for 600. Here we go. First correct response is from Becky. Was DNS domain name service or domain name system? <laughs> I've seen it both ways. I think it's service. All right, Becky. 
Uh, 400 for domain four, please. Domain four, 400. First response is from original Brit. What is DHCP? DHCP is a service um, that will pull all of the available IP addresses of a private or public network and automatically dispense them to computing devices that are configured for that network. <clears throat> I remember my um, system engineering days at the Pentagon where, where we didn't have DHCP. We had to statically input IP addresses on all the computing devices all over the doggone Pentagon, which meant we had to walk. <laughs> We got a lot of walking done in that building. All right. Actually, George, George got it, not I. Was that George? Let me see. That's all right. You should yeah. have it. Oh, no. That I, I thought no? I... No? <laughs> no. no. It's George. yours. I see George for DNS, then original Brit. Uh -uh. I thought I got it there. No. I, uh, okay. see, I see George much later. Unless, oh, I know what I know. I think I know what it was. I, I think you, uh, original Brit, put that in for incorrectly for a different question. Um, and I have a hard time seeing all the information in this trail. No, actually, I see he he was slightly ahead of me. Okay. Um, I was right. responding to something that he said. George, I'm not out to get you, man. I, I promise. It's all right. All right, buddy. Or George. All right, so uh, we still got 400 uh, domain actually, four. No, no, let me clear that out. Okay. All right, there we go. 200. Domain four for 200 to close out that category. <laughs> One word response, but correct. <laughs> From George, what is a honeypot? We talked last week about a bastion host. A honeypot is something that you would put usually in your DMZ, and um, you would leave everything open. You'd have every port protocol service running. You'd, you'd have no security features, um, and it's low-hanging fruit. It's designed to attract a hacker if they if they're scanning your network and make it into your network and see this system. This is the one they're going to go after. And um, But you'll have something like auditing on there so you can track the, the attack vector and what the hacker did to, to gain access or what their typical approach would be so that you can kind of get an idea of, uh, of what their, their mode of operation is. All right, George. All right, let's do uh, security and risk management for 400. Domain 1.15 for 400. First correct response is from original Brit. What is a countermeasure? <clears throat> so we saw that term control early in this round. A safeguard and a countermeasure are both controls. They're both protective measures that you put in place. A safeguard is put in place before you uh, rec recognize or observe a risk or have an exposure. And a countermeasure is something you implement after you have an exposure. So you're more preactive, um, uh, I mean, uh, proactive with safeguards and reactive with countermeasures. All right, original Brit. And that one I think we only have one left, and um, I think it's um, 200. Or yeah, we only have, right? yeah, we only have 200 available. Let me try. It's not going to clear out, so... Um, yeah, either one of those 200s. 3.12, 3 please. 
3.12 for 200 to close out that category. First correct response is from Becky. Who is the cloud provider? Consumer and provider are the terms that NIST prefers to use. All right, and the last one, domain 1.15 for 200. Here we go. And the first correct response is from Becky. Yay! <laughs> what is operational goals? Again, these are a part of the, the planning horizon um, so that you can prioritize your goals. You have, um, I use the acronym OTS, O T S, operational goals tactical goals and strategic goals, operational or short-term, tactical or mid-term, strategic or long-term goals. So your short-term stuff would be, op, you know, security functions, security operations, things you're doing on a daily basis, uh, reviewing audit logs and, and things like that. Um, your tactical goals might be running vulnerability scans once a week, if not more often. And then your strategic goals could be reviewing your security policy uh, at least annually or semi-annually something like that all right guys uh, that concludes this round anybody want to hang around for some discussion on those two terms we identified anything else i'm going to turn off the recording and we can do that now but thanks again everyone uh, actually real quick <clears throat> let me um before you drop off, let me go ahead and share my screen again. Let me show you the website. Um, I just got the book printed. Um, and I didn't. Uh, original Brit, did you get your copy? Okay. Yes, she did. All right. So if, if anybody can see my webcam, this is the book. This is the, the course material, the source for all the Jeopardy questions it comes from that book. And of course you can go to the website here, um, the audio episode, you can stream all the audio from here, from the website. Um, and then you can purchase content. I have a thumb drive that has the MP3 files of all the audio. Um, so you can put it on your uh, smartphone or, and listen to it while you, while you commute to work. Uh, and then uh, the book is available under purchase content. And then on uh, this link here for on-site and online training, uh, we do boot camps on-site and online. You can go there to request information for that. All right, thanks again, everyone. I'll see you next week for round 13.